welcome to my urban garden. My name is Melissa and here at Desert Girl Coastal Life we are trying to grow all things fruit and veg and a little bit of subtropical and tropical as well. This year we had some difficulty in the springtime. It was very cold, very wet and so a lot of the seeds I put out unfortunately a either didn't germinate and the ones that did got quickly eaten up by squirrels, raccoons, and rats. Needless to say, a lot of the stuff that I did want to grow this year certainly had some difficulty. However, the garden itself, as we're going to spin around, you'll get to see a lot of what has been successful. Here we're looking at the southwest corner of our backyard where we have three avocado seedlings we have planted along with some crocus mia flowers. But here, let's take a quick look at these avocados. I planted them out quite early in the spring when we still had a lot of cold weather and rain. So there was some damage, but generally speaking, they're actually doing quite well in this area. So we're gonna grow them on all summer and see what happens. We also have these gorgeous crocus mia around which attract a lot of hummingbirds. And that is the goal of our yard this year and next year is we wanna basically try to bring in as many butterflies, monarchs to be specific, as well as hummingbirds and dragonflies to kind of help the ecosystem. Now looking at the backyard here, you'll see we do have quite a few plants, but a lot of the area is still quite barren as a lot of the seeds I wanted to grow were consumed by some of the rodents that we have. But we'll show you some of our subtropical trees. Here we're looking at some star fruit. We did start these from seed and they're about a year and a half, almost two years old maybe. They've done quite well. They survived a lot of their time inside having uh, spider mites. So considering that they're not in their native habitat, I think they're actually doing pretty well. Here is a very wide mix of citrus that we have grown from seed, all of which that have done really well through the winter time. We also have some young May hiding in there and some star apples that we started from seed as well as some potombas. And this here is a look at my Escarlet Japoticaba. Now this tree has done really well and as you can see it has a lot of new growth coming in. I did unfortunately bring it out a little too early in the year so I did have some loss but it's bouncing back. Now we're just taking a look at our strawberry guavas. These are extremely easy to grow from seed and they've been growing on again about a year and a half. I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, that I will have some strawberry guavas next year. And then we got some lychees, also they've done really well. And then as you can see, if you guys remember from last year's videos, we had a mango tree, a sugar mango to be exact. And it has grown really well indoors. It's putting on lots of new growth. And it's actually about, I'd say about two and a half, almost three feet tall. Here we're looking at a miracle fruit tree. I am so excited about this. I wasn't sure if it was gonna do very well, but it's put on a lot of new growth. And now that it's outside, it seems to be even happier. So here we're looking at, again, another mix of citrus seedlings and grafted varieties. The citrus has done quite well. As you may have watched in one of my videos, we did have a sumo come true to seed, so always exciting. Here is a look at my peach tree, again grown from seed. We're gonna come down so you can actually see the base of the tree and how big the trunk is. It seems quite happy being in the ground. I do have a bunch of white peaches and donut peaches that are also starting up, so I'll have those ones hopefully planted in the ground as well. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get some fruit next year. Now, here is a look at our King Chatoot, or white mulberry. I'm quite happy to have this tree. I know it's a fast grower, but this year it has not put on any fruit. Again, very hopeful for next year that we'll have that opportunity. Now, this is an exciting loquat tree. I found it at a local nursery here, and when I picked it up, it was already had three loquats on it, which we did have the opportunity to try, and they are delicious. Here we have some more orange seedlings and lemon seedlings and limes. So I have been collecting quite a few of them in the hopes that all of the trees that do produce fruit and are polyembryonic, I'll be able to keep so that we'll have exact replicas. Jackfruit, this is a tree that you don't expect to grow here, and I'll be honest, it's not done very well. So we'll see how it goes. Here is a look at 
some of my vining plants. I have uh, different kinds of uh, cucumbers here and some squashes. And as you can see, some of the fruit is trying to come in, which is always a good sign. I do enjoy growing them vertically to save on space. Now, down in this section, I have some columnar apple trees. This one in particular is the scarlet uh, uh, columnar apple, and it has put on a lot of fruit. I'm trying to save some of them with baggies just in case my critters try to get to them. And lavender is one I particularly enjoy growing in the garden. It brings in a lot of beneficials like bees, and is just so beautiful to look at with the color. As you can see here, we have a mix of the yellows and the purples, and honestly, the yellow I never plan to grow, but it is considered, I guess, more of a weed, but it looks so beautiful, I've decided that this weed can stay. Now, against the fence, we did do quite a bit of planting here and dense planting. We have a bunch of apple trees that are grafted varieties and ones that I have grown from seed. We also have blueberries in between our apples and pears. And that's always fun to be able to come out and harvest a few berries in between the uh, fruit trees. Here you can see we're lucky enough this time of year that some of the blueberries are starting to come out and I get to pick them and have a little morning snack. These particular blueberries I actually found on discount, so I think they were maybe just a few dollars. And I got them planted early this spring and as you can see they're putting on a nice little harvest. We also have our berry cage that is filled to the brim of all different types of berries, blueberries, raspberries, has cups, and uh, gooseberries, things like that. So this is uh, just kind of here on the outside helping along with our harvest. Now at the back of the fence you can see those tall green uh, shoots, those are gladiola, so hopefully we'll have those producing some beautiful color behind the trees. Here is one of the apples that, this is the first year we're gonna have one apple, but exciting nevertheless. This one here I believe is the uh, Orin or Pearman. I'll have to confirm that one. Now, we have a pear tree here, and I'm actually trying to train it so that the branches kind of look more espalier. So I'm putting rocks and bangs, trying to hold down this uh, few branches so that it's not consistently growing in a vertical manner. I do have to place a few more bags around so I can create the shape that I desire in my pear tree. And down here, we do have one out of our three pears that I have decided to protect as we do have a lot of squirrels that are very hungry and happy to eat whatever they can find. Now just a look down the fence line here, you can see it, it's pretty densely packed. We do have our garlics which are soon ready for harvest. And you can tell they're ready for harvest because they start to turn brown on the lower leaves. And that is a sure sign that harvest is very soon. But what I will do is move around some of the wood chips, just kind of looking at the bulb to make sure I am happy with the time for harvest. Now in the garden, pink champagne currants. This is actually the first time I've ever grown or had currants and they've been really successful. They're cold hardy down to zone three. They're very easy to grow in a container or in the ground and they're actually quite prolific. So as you can see here, being the first year, it's done quite well. Now, the Wallagenstar garage is overflowing in abundance with hydrangeas. I, when I first purchased these hydrangeas, thought they would only be maybe just a couple feet, three feet tall and wide, and they have overtaken this area and even outshined my apple tree. If you remember in the spring, I had posted some pictures and video of this tree filled with flowers and fruit and unfortunately the squirrels ate every single one. So we will not have the opportunity to try these apples this year. Next year they will be highly protected. And here's another look at, these are proven winner hydrangeas. Um, I will put the name on the screen at least for the purple ones and I can't remember what the limey green ones are. Now we have one section of our backyard that still I have not completed, so it's more of a wild area. It's been really good for bees and uh, other insects but I will be changing this out to have a little bit more of a cleaner look. Now this is an interesting tree. This is an Asian pear tree 
and it has a very weeping structure. I'm so surprised. I've been trying to hold it up, but all it wants to do is weep. And you can see it's producing more shoots that are going to go vertical, so we'll see what happens next year. Here's a look at our romance series. We have three from this series of sour cherries. These are all developed in Saskatchewan. And they're great because they're extremely cold hardy. This one here you can see is the Valentine. Now, an unusual thing happened. I have two, I had two pawpaw trees. Both were cultivar varieties, mango and I think the Pennsylvania gold. And both of them died over the course of our extremely cold winter, but the one actually produced these extra shoots and we're gonna see what happens. It so far has grown substantially faster than the grafted variety did originally. Now looking at this is our this is a new tree in our yard and I'm excited about it because it is a nitrogen fixer. And so it's good for me to have these kinds of trees in our backyard where the soil is not quite as good. And as you can see as we scroll down all the little berries that are soon to come if you've not heard of this before, Amber Autumn Olive. It's a beautiful amber yellow color. And these little berries, I do believe, have quite a bit of vitamin C in them. They're quite healthy, but they are very tiny, so you know, possibly quite hard for harvesting. We'll find out here in the autumn. Now, this tree here, I'm very happy to have. It also is a nitrogen fixer. This is a sea buckthorn, or sea berry, and the kind is Cirola. Now, I chose this one because of the size of the berries. You can see there's one here. It did not put on a very big harvest. It's actually a rather small harvest, but excited nonetheless to have. Here is a look at our Cupid variety. Now, this tree is actually more of a tree shape, and this one I'll be putting into the ground. Once I harvest my garlic, that is where this tree will go. Many of you have probably already seen this is our Shiro Plum, and it's done very well. It has a very strong base, and I've been pruning it open vase shape and trying to keep it, you know, at roughly six feet at its max. This year we did have quite a few blooms. However, um, all of the little fruit dropped, and so I'm not sure if it's the age of the tree or if it's not getting proper pollination. Now here is a look at a little berry tree I love quite a bit. This is the Chilean guava. It produces these absolutely beautiful flowers that then turn into these red little berries. Hard to describe the flavor of them, but they're, it's almost like cotton candy. They're so delicious. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I highly recommend growing them. You can grow them in pots or in the ground. Now beside it, I do have another tree which I'm very happy to have in the yard. This is a Red Haven peach. This is something that um, we grew up eating. Um, we haven't of course had any fruit. I'm very hopeful for maybe next year. And as you can see, this is meant for a zone five. Now into our berry cage here, you, you can see how crowded this area is. We have blueberries and raspberries and hascups and gooseberries and pink lemonade blueberries and Chilean guavas are in here and it is jam packed. We've done really well as far as growth and because of that, there's very little room left. You can see some of our raspberries. This particular raspberry I planted in the ground and it produced so many runners that that has now taken over and I have to go in and start to remove some of them. Now, here is a look at one out of our two pineapple guavas. I'm really happy to have these, although we've not had, of course, any success in growing fruit. This was in the ground for a couple years, but it really did suffer with the cold, so now that I've put it in a pot, it has produced a lot more uh, leaves. Now, looking at this area, it has really suffered this year again with the cold. I did try to plant a bunch of peppers in here. Originally, I planted on snow peas but the critters got to those. Most anything I put in the ground the critters are eating prior to 
it becoming full. Now, here's a look at our ambrosia tree. This is an apple tree that my husband absolutely loves the flavor of, so I had been looking high and low for one. Finally found one, and we have this planted in a pot in the ground. And we're going to just see how it does in this particular location. And of course, we can't leave out the nasturtiums. We had some pop back from last year, and I have planted these ones here, which are just a gorgeous variegated leaf with these beautiful pop of yellow. Here's just a quick look at some of our gooseberries. I was not able to walk into the berry cage to show you, but it gives you a good idea. Now we do have some uh, beans planted here, along with some onions, and we have dill coming up. We do have some zucchinis and squashes. Zucchinis I'm excited about as we have a lot of zucchini soup we enjoy making in the winter. Now here is a fun little tree. I started these tamarillo trees from seed and boy are they fast growers. If you want a simple and easy tree to grow, if you can get your hands on a tamarillo, this is awesome. Now the loquats that I mentioned before that we had tried this year that tasted delicious, this is actually the seeds. We planted them out and they are now popping up out of the ground and looking good. So we're going to plant them into their own separate pots and get them growing on. And now here's a look at our star cherries. Again, these ones were grown from seed and these are ones that we're particularly excited about. When we tried them, we loved them. Now from seed to harvest, I have heard it takes one year. So we'll see how true that is. But so far, you know, they've been a slow to medium grower. Here's the Chapotacabas, and you can see the tininess of these little seedlings. They've been growing on since, uh, let's see, December. And so you have to have a lot of patience when it comes to Chapotacabas. But we're very excited about them, very happy to have these particular ones growing and hopeful for a very big harvest. Now here's a look at again another seedling. This is a persimmon. We had purchased these beautiful little persimmons that were so sweet and so delicious that I couldn't help myself but I wanted to try to grow one from seed. Now here's just a look at some of our atamoyas and tamarillos. We also have some mandarin orange seedlings. But these little tamarillos here with the big leaves, those will have to get potted up right quick as the roots are starting to pop out the bottom. And I'll just plant them up in the same mix that I always talk about, which is sand, perlite, and peat moss. I find they're very happy in that mix. And here is a look at one of our other Yangmei uh, seedlings. And this little Atamoya had some struggles, but it's going to keep pushing out leaves. Now here is the newest addition to our family. We have two little trees here, both of which are doing decently well. I only got them in about a month or so ago. First one, peanut butter fruit. If you've not heard of this tree, I tell you it's exciting. The peanut butter fruit tree is quite interesting when you look into it. Now this particular tree here is called the Abiyu. This one I am very happy to have. The Abiyu tree I have seen grown in Hawaii and it looks like a very delicious fruit. I don't know if I'll ever get fruit, but the joy is in growing the plants. Now we have a, quite a mix here of lychees, all of which we've grown from seed, some of which have done better than others. And we also have a couple more of our mango trees. Now these ones, after being acclimatized, will go over to the other side with the other mangoes. And here is one of my eldest Atamoyas. You can see the size of the trunk and it's doing quite well. When it was inside the house, it was not putting on any new growth, but now that it has been outside for a couple weeks, it's pushed out a new branch. So it's very happy to have the warm weather finally and to be outside in the sunshine. Now against our fence, we decided to put up some bamboo poles and to grow this honeysuckle. This is the first time I've grown a honeysuckle, but I'm excited to have it as I do know hummingbirds, again, love this plant. Now, I don't know how uh, rapidly it will grow or whether we'll get any flowers this year, but I'm hopeful that it will cover up this area and create a beautiful living wall where we can sit at the table and watch our hummingbirds. 
And here is a look at again one of my seedlings, lemon seedlings, and this tree has done extensively well. It's grown quite a bit here coming into the springtime. We certainly brought it out too early, but it's done great. The first one is Coratina, and we also have another olive tree called, I think it's Lacino. And this one here, we picked up both of them at Phoenix Perennials in Richmond. This one in particular is doing quite well. After being planted outside at a south-facing location protected by the house, it doesn't get as much rain as the rest of the yard and it is doing really well. Beside the house, we do have some eggplants. These were thoughtfully given to me by my neighbor and I do know they require quite a bit of heat so I've placed them there in order for them to hopefully get a bit bigger before I plant them out. And then just an up close look at these stunning lilies. I hope you guys enjoyed our little summer walk around the garden and you got to see and experience some of the things that we have growing on. As our things are growing, we're going to take you around to kind of give you updates and especially with all the seeds that we're growing, but I'm grateful you guys are here with me today and no matter what you grow, I hope you grow what you love. Bye!